All right, guys, welcome back. Today, we are going to do crackle on top of crackle. Super cool technique. And we are going to show you how to base your pumpkins and your letters and do drop shadow. All right, so you see that I got great crackle going right here. Now what I have to do is fill in my slats on each side. So I'm gonna use a dome brush and I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of paint and then I'm just gonna dry brush in the thing, in the little groove, and that will disguise that little groove. Once it dries, you'll never know it's there. You'll see the texture, but you won't see big black line. The color that we're using is the same color as we crackled, and that is the Deco Arts Khaki Tan. Um, the closest we have, um, the color chip charts, the closest one that I see is number 82, and it's a little bit darker, so, this is a nice little match, but it wouldn't match exactly. So if you want it to match exactly, um, you're gonna need to mix some colors. But um, that's a pretty close. Um, it's got just a little bit of a brown mixed into it. I think that would do the trick if you wanted to match. Anyway, because we're doing the crackle with the weathered wood, we have to keep within the same paint family line. Um, the Sherwin-Williams paints that we use for bulk projects painting um, doesn't crackle as well as the DecoArt paint because it's a DecoArt product. Okay, now we get to mark where we're gonna put our bands. I'm gonna use a T-square. I've got the distance marked. Now I'm gonna use a ceramic lid. This is a Triple Threat Ghost Rider and it has a white ceramic lead, a black ceramic lead, and a roller ball so that you can trace without putting ink on your pattern. Um, and it erases with water, eraser, even a little bit of spit if you want it to, um, anything that you want. It's very, very, very easy to get your lines gone. If you use a pencil, sometimes they can blend with the, um, with the, the paint and cause problems. Using a T-square, our board is almost straight and flat. I'm gonna go on the other side because that side has a big old bevel on it. Okay, and that is a little bit wonky, so I will take care of that when I put the band on. Okay, so just mark it on both sides. This um, shape of this wood, if I turn it over, you can see the shape of the wood has um, a bunch of jiggity jags to be like old weathered board. Okay, so that's why it's not a straight board, but that's gonna be close enough and I'll show you how I deal with that. Okay, so next we are going to crackle um, on our crackle. We're crackling on crackle. Okay, so we'll take our DecoArt weathered wood and we are going to put a coat of that on the areas to be crackled. And it doesn't matter if it gets inside the other band. There's so much texture going on with this project. Um, but we just keep it as clean as we can. Just try not to have like a um, noticeable, like liney stripe kind of thing. Okay. Now with the weathered wood, if you're new to this and you didn't see the first part, there's another part to this video. We're breaking it into three parts. Um, and that shows you how to do the weathered wood um, to get ginormous big cracks. Um, I love the idea of crackling over crackle so that we can um, get the crackle texture under crackle texture. That's just kind of neat. With the um, weathered wood, you want to spread it out really nice and thin. It has a tendency to want to pull back into itself. And then we're just going to let that dry. This is a chemical-based um, medium, which means that it will respond to the chemicals in the paint. And so that means um, you are going to um, crackle anytime later, even if it's dry, if that makes sense. Um, some crackles are time sensitive. DecoArt uh, Delta had a time sensitive one. If you missed that window of opportunity, you were never getting it back. So um, I do like this product because it doesn't, you don't have to you know, set your clock by it. Okay. We have our crackle medium it is dry. Now we're going to scoop the paint. So you really want to put it on thick. So scooping, um, I am using the DecoArt. Remember a DecoArt paint because I'm doing the DecoArt weathered wood and this is russet. Okay, and I'll show you on the color chip chart what would be the best closest thing to do. 
Okay, so I'm gonna lay that on there without overstroking. And then just smooth it out a little bit. The thicker your paint goes on, the thicker your crack will, crackles will be. Stay out. Now you also have to go in the direction. It's very tempting for me to go across here to, um, to cut across there, but if I do that, my cracks will go in the other direction. And you don't want that. That's actually a really good thing to talk about right there. I'm just kind of leading with the edge of my brush along my chalked line. And then I'm, my brush is almost laying completely down so that I can just lay the paint on super duper, 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 duper thick. If you wanted fine crackle, you could sponge it on and it would do little fine meshy kind of looking crackles. There's a lot of ways that you can do crackle. I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to repeat on the bottom side. Um, while we're up here on the leaf, get another brush and we'll get our stem done. And then you're going to wait quite a while for that to, to crack. This one is um, DecoArt Americana planta uh, Plantation Pine. Scooping my paint, adding that to the top. It's tempting because it's a small area not to scoop and apply because I could smear that paint around, but then you won't see big cracks. So this is not about base coating as much as it is about um, getting the nice size cracks. If I was going to make my, um, I'm gonna put that in my water. If I was gonna make the russet color um, because I didn't want cracks and I just wanted to use the Sherwin-Williams paint, you can see that these two colors are pretty close. This is number 18 but I would mix just a little dash of my black in with it to darken it up just a little bit. That's the biggest hint with these, is you can take this as your starting point, but then you can take a little bit of brown and mix a little black to get a, a deeper color um, with things. And then the pine, oops, knocking everything over. Um, I would say the plantation pine is gonna be over here in number 51 or number 71, depending on if you want a darker project or a brighter project. So. I'm gonna get this other one done and we'll see you on the next step. All right, we're ready to do the bands. The crackle turned out amazing. So we're gonna use a mix of number 37 and just a little bit of black. Okay, so sometimes when I'm mixing colors, I'll use things that I call like a chocolate chip system. So if you pretend like that's like four chocolate chips, I'm gonna do four chocolate chips of the number 37 to one chocolate chip of number 28. And that's gonna be about chocolate chip size. You decide what size chocolate chips you're gonna use and then keep those measurements approximately the same. I just need a tint of something darker and sneak the dark into the light. You don't wanna to put too much. I just needed that to be a little darker because my contrast between this dark red and this color needs to be a little bit deeper. Okay, so I'm gonna use my paper towel, pull off the paint, and then we're going to use our banding stencil. I've got it taped in two places. If you only tape it in one, you can move things around. When you tape it into two, things don't move. Like I can move the bottom of the stencil, but I don't move the top. Okay, we're gonna go into our dome brush. Our dome brush is dry. It is cut in a dome shape, so when you push it down on your project, it can't sneak hairs underneath your stencil, which causes bleeding under, okay? That means the stencil becomes not precise, okay? Then we dry it off, we offload our paint, about five to 10 times, depending on how hard you're pushing, depending on your experience. Sometimes I can feel the weight of the paint, um, so like I, I've got a good experience level. Um, and then I am going to go ahead 
and take my multi-masker and put it right along here. This is a little bit narrow. If I push on this close to this edge, I might sneak over here. So the multi-masker is just a masking tool. And now I've talked to my brush dry. Very good at doing that. And then we're just gonna stipple here. I need control. And then I don't wanna stipple up to my line. And I also, you guys will have seen me if you subscribe and ring the bell and do all the things on our YouTube channel, you will see me break this roll all the time. I always forget. So you want to not go to the edge because that straight line is really hard to fuse in. And it's helpful if I'm explaining the rule exactly when I'm getting close to that edge. Now I'm going to go backwards and I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more. And I've got to move this so I've got these little teeth right here. I want it to be on the flat edge. Okay, I'm going to hit the blow dryer for a hot second and then I'll show you how to continue. Okay, we're ready to continue. Now I'm going to go ahead and do one more coat. So basically it was like three coats. It just depends on how heavy your brush is loaded, um, how you hold your tongue, how your fingers and you cross your toes and fingers. It's so interesting how many variables there are. We're just going to pick that up. And then that is paste. Now we'll lay that down. And then we'll go into our paint, offload. Multi-masker, just a really handy tool. This has become one of our best sellers, like almost overnight. Like you need, if you're doing an intricate stencil, you need, if you're gonna change colors, you need to be able to mask your project. All right, so I'm going to finish with a couple more coats, do the top band, and then we'll be ready to move on to the juicy stuff in the middle. I cannot believe what a great, fantastic tool this banding stencil is. Look at how easy it is to make a band go all the way across. I do have a little bit where I didn't get quite into my edge. I'm just going to take a synthetic bristle brush and a little bit of my base color. And have the lid taken off of this. And then I'll just sneak in just a little bit right next to my edge. Almost like putting makeup on. That dries, it'll be perfect. Ah, banding stencils, I love you. Ta-da! Next, we are going to do the pumpkins and the drop shadow for the letter B. We are ready to add our boo, which is the letter B with two pumpkin faces. And so we're going to get them based. But we want to do the drop shadow. And you kind of do the drop shadow at the same time as you're doing your basing. So I'm going to do an initial little scumble base coat. And we're going to do something just slightly different than we've done before. Thought of a great idea. So we're going to go here. We're just going to scumble on our letter. So I dry brush, dry paint, dry off on the paper towel, and then just lightly swirl. This is where my lettering is going to be. And when you do a drop shadow, you always... Um, start out identifying where your lettering will land at the end. Then you lift your paint, your project, and then this is where we're gonna do something just a little bit different. I am going to switch to a little, how little? I think a quarter inch um, dome brush, and I'm gonna switch into my dark brown color that we used for the banding. Okay, which was, let's clarify, 37 plus a touch. So four chocolate chips of 37 and one of 28. And now when we do our drop shadowing, I'm gonna have a strong black line over here. 
and over here. So it's all going to be to the um, right. But notice that I have this kind of broad other line. And I was thinking, like, how could I get that without it being too stripy? So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and we're just going to scumble our line. And then we'll keep everything to the right. And then round out your corners. This has got this, the groove um, can throw you for a little loop there. Pick up some more paint. Okay, and then we do the far, well, actually, actually that's the left side. These are the left sides. Okay, sorry, artist. Okay, so. make that a nice shadowy effect. And I usually do unders as well. Okay, so now that gives us a deeper shadow. I might even deepen it just a little bit. What I love about these techniques with stencils and with these dome brushes is it allows you to be an artist without having to have two advanced artist skills. So you can kind of do the technique without having to know a whole bunch of crazy things. I'm literally not looking at my hand while I'm doing this and I'm talking to you. So this is easy to do. Okay, so I think that's good. And I've got a little bit on the other letters. I probably should have just gone ahead and done those at the same time. Let me get set up here and we'll give them a little scumbly poo. When you're buying your dome brushes, um, you want to buy probably about, I, I think a good number if you're going to paint frequently is like 25. So five sets or I use quite a few larger brushes than the smaller. So you could do a couple of the sets and then a bunch of just the bigger brush. So that's a good number to have because they need to go right into the water or you'll wreck the brush. Okay, so we'll go here. I'm going to get that this scumble. And I want to go ahead and give it the middle scumble too, because if we just outline, it'll be hard to cover up later. I love that the stencils are repositionable. Um, I took a workshop once where we were doing the, um, the vinyl and we had to poke it. And so we spent a lot of time poking and weeding the vinyl. And then my friend laid hers down, but she got it crooked. And then when she lifted it off, the vinyl was wrecked and that went into the trash. And then she had to weed hers all over again and then figure out how to straighten it out. When you have a stencil, it's repositionable, it's washable, reusable, all those things. So really, really handy dandy. So I'm gonna get another smaller brush. Okay. And we'll take our dark color. And we're gonna go on the same sides. Um, stenciling, we say that stenciling is a layers game. So one layer at a time, that's how we're gonna attack this. So now we'll lay this back over the top. And then we're gonna offset the stencil in the same direction. Okay, so this is where it would be, right there. Okay, and then we're gonna pull it back evenly. And it takes just a minute to figure out what you're doing. And now we're going to go there and we're going to add our black. So we'll go into, once again, just a little brush, just black. Always shake your paint before you're doing anything with it. And I've got just the really little size brush. And instead of making a big mess over everything, I'm just going to give it a little, a little bit more paint. Little brushes don't carry the paint as well. Let me look and see how that looks. It's pretty good. Kind of almost want it to be like liney stripey. Okay, so now we're gonna lay this stencil back on top. I love stencils. 
Okay, and we line that up with the original orange line. Let me make sure that we're lined up everywhere. I'm gonna check my line going up here. Looks pretty good. And now we're gonna base coat. Sometimes your um, stencil brushes will lose hairs. This one's got a few extra hairs, but it's going wild. Um, the orange color that we are using is nine, number nine. And pick that up. And now we're going to go ahead and stipple because when we stipple, it base coats better. Now when you stipple, you don't want to be shoving it underneath your stencil. And you also want to use, um, you're going to layer this, but you want to make sure that you are not, um, that you are getting these cracks kind of base. You don't want a whole bunch of texture on your pumpkins and on your letter B. All right, I've got the first coat on, or the second coat, sort of, and then we're gonna do our background and make sure that we can create a little bit of interest in the background. So we're gonna take one of our foam brushes. This is a poly foam brush. We're gonna take number 17, shaky, shaky, shaky. And we are going to create a little bit of faded interest in the background. So you're just gonna put light pressure. That is a little bit too heavy for me. If we go a little bit over our orange, it will not matter. So what if I get one heavier than the other? That's a good question. I'm so glad you asked. Once we have the orange on there, it's really easy to see kind of where we want to go with this. So it's nice to have that orange in there. So we have some details in here. So we have um, um, spider, the webbing, some of that. So we'll keep that just a little bit lighter and then just warm up our edges going around. So how do you tame something that maybe got out of control? So we're gonna take our sanding block and we're just gonna sand while it's wet. And now we do our next coat of our orange. Okay, we're ready to do the green stems that I have here. Just wanna get everybody base coated so that um, we can move on to the next place, which is gonna be how to decorate your pieces. So I've got number 51 and number 43, and this is off our paint chart, which shows all the paints that we use. Um, with a color matched chip so that you can match your own paints. If you have some Apple Barrel laying around, some Deco Art, some Delta, um, some Sherwin Williams, if you have a bunch of things, you can color match to these and you can follow along in the project if you want to. Sometimes these projects are a lot more about the technique. I love the drop shadow technique I just like came out with just the second. Um, I think that's a really good one. That's a keeper. So we're going to use our multi-masker. We're going to use a mixed green that was about three of the 51 to one of the 43. Okay, and then we use our multi-masker and we kind of get in there. This is one of those areas where we set it in there and just do that little corner, set it over here, do that little corner. Little stipple, stipple, and then we turn the nose of this guy. He looks like he has a nose with like a laughing mouth. And that's why he's always got a nose in my brain. And then from there, you just carry on. So
such a great way to mask your project. Um, I noticed I did a little ghosting when I was basing the pumpkin. Um, so I want to make sure that I don't ghost green onto the pumpkin because I've already covered the green that I did earlier um, with my pumpkin color. Ghosting is where you sneak into your neighborhood areas and you just kind of um, put a hint of the color down and you don't mean to. Okay, so we just get that based. Same, same, same. I'm going to pick up some black. I'm just going to wipe this color off. I'm going to pick up black right here. I'm going to get that spider. This is very quickly going to start looking like a project. This is how you do multiple colors in close areas. Okay, I got that guy. We're going to get our crow standing on the fence right there. Okay, and now we'll get the fence done. Fence is going to be in a nice creamy color. I think we'll go with this vintage white. It's going to seem a little bright, but I'm going to do a little dry brush on top of it. Um, that vintage color is number 22. Okay, Mr. Multi-Masker, bring you on over here. I'm probably going to need two of you right now. Having a couple of these is very, very helpful. So I've got crow feet over here. And then I've got this um, pumpkin on the other side. So just go here. And here. Okay, we've got everybody base coated. Um, I do want to point out that right over here on this one piece right here, that is a very, very thin separation. So without the multi-masker, you would not be able to do that. You could tape it, um, but with the, like, the little red truck, which has been one of our number one sellers forever and ever, um, you have to tape so much and you just get so frustrated spending all of that money on tape. Tape is expensive. And then you throw it all away two seconds later after taping around uh, a hubcap. You know, so it's so nice just to have a multi-masker. Um, I don't even wash these. After they get thick, you probably would want to wash them. They probably peel away um, the color and stuff like that, but you could just put it in hot soapy water. We have a how to clean your stencils video. Um, and so that would be a really good resource for you to watch if you want to know how to clean um, any of these. And by the way, the um, palette paper that I'm using is a sheet of mylar that you can just simply wash off and then reuse. Um, and that comes in, this one is a long masker, but it comes in sizes that are this big without the paint on them. Um, and then we cut them into threes and then just tape them down on the table. So they become like a green resource for painting. You don't have to throw it away. And then we'll pull this off and take a look. Ta-da! Okay, so this is where maybe a lot of artists would stop. Um, this is when you're doing DIY and you're crafting, this is like as complicated as we get. But let me put you side by side, and this is why you're gonna wanna know, you're gonna wanna subscribe, you're gonna wanna ring that bell, because you're gonna wanna see the next episode. Okay, now what we do besides all the raffia and all of that stuff. Now we are going to add highlights through our stencil. We're gonna add details through our stencils. We're going to sprinkle details in the background. We're just gonna go kind of a little bit wild, almost a little mixed media, and we are going to create this wonderful, super detailed faces with eyeballs and little teal hints. You guys are gonna dig the next session. So I will see you in that one and have a great day.